Hi everyone, so today we're going to have a look at demand side policy, we're going to have a look at fiscal and we're going to have a look at monetary policy as well. So in April 2018, the UK's inflation rate was 2.5% and in April 2020, the UK inflation rate was 1.7%. What I would like you to do is brainstorm any factors that you think could impact the inflation rates in the UK in 2018 and 2020. So just pause this video here and then you'll have a bit of time to um, brainstorm that. OK, so we're going to have a look at demand side policies and demand side policies are designed to increase or decrease consumer demand. They cause an increase or decrease in total production in the economy and they cause aggregate demand to shift. There are two different types of demand side policy. We have monetary policy and we have fiscal policy. So monetary policy controls the flow of money through interest rates and the money supply. Fiscal policy controls government spending and taxation, which influence aggregate demand. In the UK, the central, our central bank is the Bank of England, and this is what the Bank of England will quote as what monetary policy is. So they say that monetary policy is action that a country's central bank or government can take to influence how much money is in the economy and how much it costs to borrow. As the UK central bank, they use two main monetary policy tools. They set interest rates, and that's called the bank rate. And then they create money digitally to buy corporate and government bonds, which is known as asset purchase or quantitative easing. We will use the phrase quantitative easing a little more. So in terms of interest rates, what happens with interest rates is the Monetary Policy Committee, which are part of the Bank of England, change interest rates to control the supply of money. They meet every month to discuss whether they would like to change interest rates. They, however, do not have to change interest rates. They can maintain the current rate. Changing interest rates um, will help the government meet its inflation target. And the UK target for inflation is 2% plus or minus percent. So this graph here shows you what um, has happened to the Bank of England base rate between 1998 and 2016. So on your x-axis, you've got time, and on your y-axis, you have the rate of interest. So I'm going to pause that there for you just to make some notes on that graph and what that graph then shows about what has happened to interest rates. OK, so now we're going to have a look at how interest rates impact aggregate supply and aggregate demand. So you have two different diagrams here. On the left, you've got an ASAD diagram that shows what happens when there is an increase in interest rates. So an increase in interest rates creates more of an incentive for consumers and businesses to save, and it makes the cost of borrowing higher. Due to that, that reduces consumption and it reduces investment, causing aggregate demand to fall and shift left from AD0 to AD1. On the right, you have a diagram that shows what happens when there is a decrease in interest rates. So a decrease in interest rates gives less of an incentive to save um, and the cost of borrowing is then lower. That causes consumption and investment to increase and therefore aggregate demand shifts from AD0 to AD1. So if you pause this here, you can jot down those diagrams and then there's a further explanation on the next slide for you to then um, copy down as well. So in terms of higher interest rates, higher interest rates create a high reward for saving, a high cost of borrowing, and um, less consumption is then um, happening in an economy, which reduces inflationary pressure. If interest rates are lower, creates a low reward for saving and a low cost of borrowing, which means that there is easier access to cheap credit in an economy and spending and investment is um, encouraged. So we're now going to move on to quantitative easing and what quantitative easing is. So quantitative easing is used um, by central banks to increase the supply of money. And it's used when inflation is low and they can't reduce interest rates any further. And what it does is it encourages more lending to firms and individuals and it decreases the cost of borrowing. Because there is a greater supply of money in the economy, um, and the cost of borrowing is low, it encourages investment and consumption, which could increase inflation as aggregate demand is increased. So that's what you need to know for monetary policy. So let's just have a quick look at some limitations of it. There's three main limitations um, of using monetary policy. So the first one is that banks might not pass on the rate change to consumers. So if the Bank of England change the base rate, the, ra um, the rate in which that change is then passed on to consumers is not necessarily immediate. So obviously there's going to then be a time lag, which we then need to consider. 
The second limitation is that since the 2008 financial crash, banks are more risk averse. And finally, firms and consumers' confidence needs to be high for them to spend. So, for example, if you have a period where consumer confidence is low, low interest rates would not necessarily cause consumers to then increase spending as well. So this question here is a question that you are then going to answer. And it's a really typical question that you might get in an exam at the end of a macro paper um, that you are then going to answer. So that is the structure that you're going to need. Um, the, question, the numbers one to seven are going to be the questions that you are going to answer. And then on the right hand side, you're going to see these hate cod, which is going to help you to evaluate it. So if you pause that there, you can plan and answer that question. So now we're going to move on to fiscal policy and fiscal policy looks at changes in government spending and taxation to stimulate the economy. So which taxes could you think of that exist in the UK? If you pause this video, you can then answer that and brainstorm any taxes that you think exist in the UK. OK, so in the UK, um, we have two different types of fiscal policy. We have expansionary fiscal policy and we have contractionary fiscal policy. Expansionary fiscal policy aims to increase aggregate demand, and what that would be is increasing in government spending or decreasing in taxation. However, because of the increases in spending or the decreases in tax, that causes worsening budget deficit for the government. Contractionary um, fiscal policy, on the other hand, aims to decrease aggregate demand. So it's where the government would decrease spending or increase taxation, and that will aim to improve the budget deficit or create a surplus for the government. So during this period of time in 2000 and, no, 2020 even, um, we have seen lots of different fiscal policy um, policies that have been put into place that just show what the government is doing. So, for example, £750 million pounds worth of grants and loans are being given to small businesses um, to focus on research and development, and um, £0.9 billion pounds to cover extra measures such as food packages for extremely clinically vulnerable. These are just some of the examples of some fiscal policies that the UK government are putting into place. And finally, there are obviously some limitations, of course, of fiscal policy. Um, one of the main ones being the government may have imperfect information. That's then going to cause limitations as to whether the fiscal policy is effective. Second one being time lag. So it takes time to implement and then for it to be filtered through into the, um, into the economy. And um, the second limitation being the multiplier effect. So if we're thinking about government spending, then it's not just the initial injection that's going to have an effect. It will have a long term increase um, in the economic growth of an economy as well. Fourthly, if interest rates are high, then fiscal policy might not have an impact on aggregate demand. And finally, the government could increase debt if they spend too much. So it's really worth having and um, keeping an eye on what's happening to government spending over the next few years, because there's been huge increase in government spending during the time that we are in at the minute. Thank you very much.